The NDP is spreading disinformation at the Heritage Committee hearings about social media companies' roles and responsibilities to stem the spread of disinformation online. Now, who wouldn't love that sort of self-confidence to be just so darn wrong and yet so convinced about being right? They also discovered in this report, sir, that X was profiting from the disorder by placing advertisements alongside the hate in the lies. What do you have to say about that, sir? Again, I'm happy to follow up with my UK colleagues and we'll talk to you more about our response in that scenario. Is it an isolated incident or do you also make a practice of profiting off of online hate? No, sir. I want to show you this clip of NDP MP Matthew Green, the embarrassingly bad representative of the good voters of Hamilton Centre. Now, Green is attacking a representative for X, testifying at the Heritage Committee. Now, X, formerly known as Twitter, is on Green's radar for allowing what Green deems wrong facts to proliferate about a stabbing in Southport, UK, which led to uprisings on the street. Now, to give context, between July 30th and August 5th, 2024, riots broke out in England and Northern Ireland following a tragic stabbing at a dance class in Southport that claimed the lives of three children and hurt nearly a dozen others. The unrest became the largest scene in England since 2011, which began near the site of the stabbing, with violent clashes outside Southport Mosque, spreading rapidly to London, Manchester, and Belfast. Now, as of September 1st, authorities say they have made 1,280 arrests with nearly 800 charges associated with the riots. Uh, Mr. Fernandez, are you familiar with the Centre for Countering Digital Hate? Yes. Mr. Fernandez, just for the record again, what's your role with X? I'm a director. I head our government affairs and public policy in the United States and Canada. So, so this would be directly in your purview. Uh, are, you, are you aware of the report entitled Social Media's Role in the UK Riots, Policy Responses and Solutions? Um, no, I'm not. Well, I'll give you some background. On July 29th, 2024, there was a mass stabbing at a children's dance class in Southport, United Kingdom. Three children died. Immediately following news um, of the attack, false information about the attacker's identity spread on social media alongside calls to, for action and violence. The next day, hundreds of people gathered outside a Southport mosque and hurled petrol bombs, bricks, and anti-Muslim abuse motivated by false information spread online that the attacker had been named, uh, and I won't even rename it because I don't want to boost it anymore, and was both a Muslim and an asylum seeker. Acts of violence and public disorder, much of it featured anti-Muslim and anti-migrant sentiment, soon spread around the country. Now, posts containing the fake name were promoted by users uh, using platform algorithms and recommended features. The Institute for Strategic Dialogue found that X featured the false name in its trending in the UK promotions, suggesting it to users in the what's happening sidebar. Far-right figures with millions of followers capitalized on false claims that the attacker was an asylum seeker, spreading the falsehood further into the massive following bases. Now, one platform stood out. It was yours. It was X. And the owner, which we identified already, Mr. Elon Musk, shared false information about the situation to his 195 million followers and made a show of attacking the UK's government response to the outbreak of violence. Rather than ensuring risk and illegal content were mitigated on his platform, Musk recklessly promoted the notion of an impending civil war in the UK. Mr. Fernandez. And yet your company, X, refuses to sign on to a uh, declaration on misinformation, on the practice of disinformation. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Fernandez? About what in particular, sir? About the fact that your platform was responsible for misinformation about the false name of a person who was identified as Muslim and an asylum seeker that reached potentially 1.7 billion people. Mr. Fernandez? 
Out of all of the people here, X is the only company that refused to sign on to a code of practice on disinformation. And your owner, who is currently on the campaign trail with Donald Trump in a hyperpartisan role of X, contrary to your testimony at this committee, is responsible for this. What do you have to say about that to the people who were targeted in the UK, sir? So we have clear policies on hate, abuse, and harassment. In the first half of this year, we suspended over 1.1 million accounts under these policies, removed over 2.2 million posts, and actioned an additional 5.3 million posts under hate, abuse, and harassment. So we do take it seriously. We do act on it. Um, and I'm happy to follow up more on, on the research, specific particularly relating to the UK riots. When I say riots, I need you to go back and look at this. Look at the work that your company is involved in on the streets, creating chaos and violence by far right extremists. The initial report gave an analysis determined that X was a significant platform in the unrest. And I quote, the X platform is accounting for roughly 50% of all the public referrals of online content, double the proportion of its next largest platform. The CCDH quantified the reach that far right influence has spreading hate and false information garnered on X in the aftermath of the attack, facilitated by your blue tech tick promotion feature and enabled by the proprietor's decision to reinstate previously banned accounts. They also discovered in this report, sir, that X was profiting from the disorder by placing advertisements alongside the hate in the lies. What do you have to say about that, sir? Again, I'm happy to follow up with my UK colleagues and we'll talk to you more about our response in that scenario. Is it an isolated incident or do you also make a practice of profiting off of online hate? No, sir. To his credit, Wilfredo Fernandez, head of government affairs for the U.S. and Canada for X, is having absolutely none of this. He's not taking the bait or even entertaining Green's calls for censorship and scolding of users of X sharing their opinions online. And it's a good thing Fernandez didn't, because new admissions by the UK government indicate that it is Green who is wrong. It was not misinformation to say that the killer, Axel Ruda Kubana, was an Islamist. Now, it should go without saying, but I'll say it anyway, I'm not pro-riot or pro-political violence. But I am pro-reality and anti-censorship, unlike our new friend from the NDP here. But don't take it from me. Take it from Reuters. Look at this. Police said the incident was still not being treated as terrorist-related, but said after searches of his home that Ruta Kubana has now been charged with production of the lethal biological toxin ricin and the possession of an Al-Qaeda training manual. Remember, the Liberals and the NDP want to be the arbiters of truth online. Will we ever see an apology from Green for his self-righteous wrongness? Of course not, because being a progressive means never having to say that you're sorry. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. It's no small irony that the people who want to control the information on the internet are actually the ones guilty of spreading misinformation. To sign our petition against Justin Trudeau's plans to control what you can see and say online, please go to stopthecensorship.ca.